Hello, Mr. Zonka here, and this video is a quick review on angle relationships. Let's get to it. Our first two are supplementary and complementary angles. Supplementary angles can form a straight line if we put those angles together. These two angles below form a linear pair, making a line, and the total measure is half of a circle, or 180 degrees. Complementary angles form a corner, or a right angle. The total measure of complementary angles is always 90. When two lines cross each other, they form these little V's, and we call these vertical angles. And the vertical angles are directly across from one another, and we know they're always congruent. So angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles and congruent. Angle 2 and angle 4 are also vertical angles, also congruent. This symbol right here, an equal sign with the squiggly above it, that represents things being congruent, or exactly the same. A line that cuts through other lines is called a transversal. We can see this line is cutting across both of those lines. If lines are parallel, we can represent them being parallel by using matching arrows on both of the lines. When we have a transversal and two parallel lines, we form lots of special relationships. Our corresponding angles are the ones that are skipping over one and kind of directly across from each other. 1, 5, 2, 6, 3, 7, and 4, 8. And we can see that all of those are congruent. Alternate interior angles are also congruent. These are alternating on the inside. 3 and 6 and 4 and 5. Each of those pairs are congruent. Alternate exterior alternate or opposite sides, exterior, outside, we've got 1 and 8, those are congruent, and then 2 and 7, those are congruent as well. Consecutive, or the same side, interior angles, are supplementary. So 3 and 5 would add to 180, and 4 and 6 would also add to 180. Consecutive exterior, same side, exterior, outside the lines, are also supplementary. That would be 1 and 7 would add to 180, and 2 and 8 would add to 180. The interior angles of a triangle add to 180 degrees. Here we have angle A, B, and C. We can see the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C would equal 180 degrees. We use that little m to represent the measure and that angle symbol to refer to an angle. These last two relationships aren't angle relationships per se, but they are related. Parallel lines, we know, have the same slope. When they're parallel, that means that that steepness or that slope is going to be equal. Perpendicular lines, two lines that cross at a 90 degree angle, have a slope that is the negative reciprocal. It's the complete opposite, going 90 degrees the op uh, different direction. Let's take this example here. We have a line y equals 2 thirds x plus 4. We know that our m value is that 2 thirds and y equals mx plus b. So a parallel line would have the same slope. That would be a slope of 2 thirds. A slope of a perpendicular line would be the opposite sign. That's going to be negative since our slope up here is a positive. And then instead of 2 over 3, we're going to take the reciprocal 3 over 2. So whenever you have parallel lines, you know the slope is the same. Whenever you have perpendicular lines, you know it's the opposite sign and the reciprocal. Just flip that fraction around. All right, everyone, I hope this video was helpful.